This entitled mom thinks her daughter's baby is going to be hers. You won't believe what creepy things she does after her daughter says that she wants no contact. Happy birthday, today's your birthday and on with the show. So, I'm a teenager with two little siblings. I have a caring mother, sometimes annoying too, but I have an unlikable father. He's also technologically outdated, so we're also technologically limited, but not in information technology. What I mean is, he refuses to use air conditioner and opts for a fan. He refuses to use the car's air conditioner and opts for the wind blowing through the side window. He refuses to use washing machine and opts to manually wash it hand by hand. He refuses to use right rice cooker and opts to use a stove to steam the rice. He refuses to use microwave and opts for a stove powered oven. He refuses to use vacuum cleaner and opts for a broom. My dad has a short temper and anger issues and if you're curious about his looks, he has close resemblance to Kane from Command and Conquer. Search it up. Bald goatee. Well, sometimes he looks like Vin Diesel. I want to describe how my dad yells at me and how it can be triggered. If my dad notices a small discrepancy in details, like seeing acne on my face. That small detail could turn into full-blown yelling that will take hours to fade. In the past, talking back at him results in belt whips, but now, talking back at him will force you into stop using your laptop, regardless of whether I got a deadline or not, because he summarizes everything as games. Crying is common. Even during arguments, he will call me an idiot, stupid, well, all kind of stupid synonyms, insulting me into oblivion to win arguments. However, I've heard that too much that it can become irrelevant, so I keep arguing with him and ignoring his insults to the point that he has lost it. And then he keeps telling me that video games are the source of my problems. Let's say I need to do my job for the whole 12 hours and decided to take an hour break and played video games. He has seen me doing my job and just moved along. Then he sees me playing video games. That's how he will come into the wrong conclusion. I told this to my higher ups. He laughed because he's actually a hard Hardcore gamer. He knows more about gaming than me, and he's the creative supervisor. The key is time management. You've spent 18 hours on video games. There is no one in this world that can play games that long. It's only you. I mean, I didn't even play games for 18 hours long when I got a job. It was during a break. And also, 18 hours is a peasant number. Hardcore gamers would play for days non stop, as long as they can still drink, eat, and bathe. He always compares me when yelling. How's your friend getting more subscribers than you? You're literally in the same school and graduated together. Your friend can do this, why can't you? And when I said I don't like getting compared with my friend who is popular, he does the opposite. I will tell you loud and clear, your friend is popular and successful and you're nothing to him, says him. He said he purposefully compares me to drive me to hard work. No, it doesn't drive me to hard work, it drives me nuts. Same goes to my sister, she doesn't like being compared. Now, let me tell you where it all began. Let's begin with my adolescence around 6 to 12. It was a harsh physical treatment. Cries are common in those days. In my family, my mum and my siblings have understood a whole new meaning of later, which translates to never. So every time my dad says later, then you must do that on your own without his permission. So because of that, sometimes when I ask my dad for a new toy when walking around in public, when he says later, I know that I must pickpocket some cash off him and buy it myself, even if it means going too far from them. I will will admit that it's still my fault. There's a quotable sentence when we had to play outside with other kids in the neighborhood. Every time dad is ticked, my youngest brother will come outside and say, punishment is back. And usually when we go home after hearing that line, dad will proceed with comparative yelling, comparing me to others and extra belt whip. Now into teenage years, 13 to 18. The whip treatment fades away, but this is a transition to something that is worse than a whip. This is the moment I found my passion in animation. My hobby was drawing since childhood, which makes sense when I found a passion when I watched some animations in YouTube videos. Because of that, I want to enroll in a vocational high school in animation major. Unfortunately, dad disagreed and wants me to major at computer networking, which means logic, math, stuff that I don't understand at all. Things became dire when my dad went into the school himself without me for registration. He made computer networking as a primary option, while animation is a secondary option. I was shocked. 
The enrollment test begins and I take a computer networking test and I cannot endure the test because I need to deal with a bunch of logic that my brain cannot comprehend. Then I thought of an idea. What if I get a bad score in computer networking? Time to revolt. So I just randomly answer any question there to finish computer networking test, then stormed out and entered the school's administration office, telling them that I don't want computer networking as a primary test and asked them to switch them. The administration explained that is not a case. It's a test order which means you've finished computer networking, continue to animation test. Then the admin showed the room where the animation test takes place. So it begins. I do everything in my power to get the highest score in animation. It worked. My purposefully bad score in computer networking was a good action because my animation test score surpassed it by large margin, which begins my animation class for three years. The side effect of my revolt is sometimes my name is not called in the class, instead addressed with a wrong name. There's a bit of a mix up in that database due to my revolt. One of my animation videos, it's cringe now but still kicking, on YouTube went viral, which allowed me to hit 10,000 subscribers and become eligible for monetization. So I take it. The income is small, but it almost took me a year to reach a $100 cap. I told my mum about my AdSense income. She was happy that I became the youngest kid in their family to make money. At the age of 16, when the first AdSense payment rolls out, unfortunately the news reached dad. More on that later. After three three years, I graduated from Vocation High School as an animator and continues into college education, despite a significant large gap of unemployment, which means I have to stay with dad, which is bad. Now into my adulthood, 19 to present. There are no cries, no whips, but it's the beginning of my financial battle. The unemployment is over. I got a job as an animator in one of the educational YouTube channels, but I had to use a software I never use in my animation days, but got a grip on it that day. This is where it gets worse. If you asked me why I got a job and enrolled in the college, I took them both because the college offers employed class or something which means you do your assignments online. You only need to go to the college at Saturday, which is a day off on my work schedule. I got a job as an intern for one month because my potential was completely unknown to them. My dad was very skeptical about this, thinking that I'm being used as cheap labor. I ignored that. But then due to my low communication skill, I need to to take another month of internship. My dad became even more convinced that I'm just cheap labor. Another yelling ensues thinking how I should quit my job, but getting a proper job is not that easy. It took me six months for them to respond to my job application. Ignore, ignore, ignore. My patience paid off. After two months of internship, I got a full-time job as an animator there. Now I can enjoy full salary and the benefit they offer. I was accepted there because I have a curiosity that allowed me to learn something new, and also excellency in animation, and how my skills are superior to the other animators. A heads up, my AdSense income around this point increases tenfold, to the point that I can reach $100 cap each month, then it stacks with my salary. If you think that my AdSense income and salary is enough, you're gravely wrong. My dad's working time somehow decreases significantly, to the point that his income also decreases. Debts start piling up, especially my college tuition fees, because this is where he starts using Using my income. I can tell because he's in healthy condition. He refuses job calls while he's slacking off watching TV. He also constantly opens my AdSense analytics page to predict how much money it will make in the end of the month. When he's unsure, he wants me to open YouTube analytics on the revenue tab. And because of how my AdSense affects my apparent performance on YouTube, my animation motivation reaches all time low. All he does is constantly tell me to upload often, which conflicts with my principle that I only upload YouTube on something that I worked on passionately. Now it's filled with cringe garbage which doesn't even boost up AdSense income. When I told him that I'm working on a passionate animation with well-written stories, polished up animation and pictures, he's not impressed. His only question was, when will you upload this? If you take too long, AdSense will drop. That's just enough to drop my will to continue animating this to zero. I can no longer trust him and can only tell my passion animation to my youngest brother and I can only work on it at 
midnight. If they know, it's bad. I couldn't pay my college tuition fee, but I must take vacation just to give me more time to bank up enough money to pay the fees. It didn't work. My dad keeps taking loans to pay debt again and again, using my income for this, that, there, these, those, then loan to pay electricity. A loan! I thought taking college vacation could help deal with loans. It just doesn't work. My mum, my sister, my brother knows what's happening and cannot complain about it because my dad has authoritative power over us. He controls with fear. He's already good in psychology since the beginning. So we vent our anger at family reunions, which my father tends to refuse the invitation. I never get to enjoy my own money. All of them get spent to debt loop. Meanwhile, my colleagues bought a Switch, some expensive figures, toys, gaming rig, powerful PC. I don't need those things, but what I need is a phone. My old phone is getting too old to the point I'm fighting with storage problems, battery life, and shared usage across the entire family. It took me like four years since I asked for a new phone. Then I hit annual double salary bonus. I keep telling him to give me my money for a new phone every day after the bonus arrived in my bank account. Because if I stay still doing nothing and being complacent, all of my money will get spent. It will take another year to get a new phone. I got my desperately needed phone after arguments with my dad. End of the past, into the present situation. No improvements, we're still in a debt loop. I need to take another six months vacation from college because I couldn't pay the fees. Dad's work time has improved, but still taking control over all my money. The moment of irony begins. Remember how my dad put animation as a secondary option? He denounced animation because computer networking makes money easier. When I proved him wrong, he tries to pull my youngest brother into animation career, which is ironic. I don't even know what he's passionate about. He likes drawing, but when I asked him about animation, he stated that he has no passion for it yet. It's basically four versus one, my family versus my dad, but my dad came out on top. Now to the positive side of my dad. My dad has a strong physicality and strong mentality. He had win streaks in shuttlecock badminton and soccer, and he has strong relations with outside world, to the point that the police officers can get deceived that he's their superior and too scared to pull him over to check his IDs. He can deal with debt collectors and intimidate them into oblivion. I also have passion in music production, and my dad has been in two bands in the past, so he has excellent experience in music. His feedback has proven useful in my musical skills. The positive side of my dad also can be used in a negative way, like gaslighting, intimidating me during arguments. My dad is likable to outside, but a villain inside, so I don't think he has more positives than his negatives. Now not everybody has a family like this, but I know there are people who can relate. It's really difficult when you have a passion about something and your parents just don't understand or they don't think it's valuable. I'm really glad that they could basically prove them wrong by showing that their skills were valuable and worth it, to the point where it's basically supporting the family. I am currently pregnant with my first child, and both my mum and stepdad have been terrible to me and my partner the entire time. Told us we'd be unfit parents because we aren't married yet, legitimately screamed at my partner for knocking up their little girl, even though we planned the pregnancy. They would call him every day and harass him, and showing up to his work, trying to convince him to leave me so I'd have no choice but to move back in with them. It got worse as the time went on. I finally decided to cut contact with them, having a child can already be a stressful time, and having them around to make it worse was not something I was okay with. My partner and I have gone through a lot with family drama the past couple years, and having this baby has been one of the most exciting things for us. If my parents can't be nice to my partner, then they don't get to see our baby. Plus, they are the kind of people who don't wear masks in public, and actively choose to be in large gatherings with no social distancing. So them seeing a newborn is out of the question. One day I sent my mum a very very detailed email of why she is not allowed to be a part of my life anymore and will not be seeing her grandchild. To make things even better, I also noted that we will be moving across the country shortly after she is born to be closer with other family members. So not only is she cut off, but we are literally moving far away and never coming back. She responds by showing up at our house at 11 p.m., screaming outside our door about how it is her baby and she deserves to be there for it. I tell her to get lost and 
and eventually she leaves. Months go by and she will text me randomly asking about technical problems with her Wi-Fi router or something and she needs help. Little things like that don't mean much to me and I sent her the info she needed. My cousin also had a virtual baby shower and sent my invitation to my mum's house accidentally so my mum came by to give it to me. Things slowly came to a point that we were fairly amicable with each other but I still stood my ground about our boundaries and nothing else had changed. She knew this. Then she sends me a video today that blew my mind. She redecorated her entire guest room to be a nursery, crib, changing table, $400 worth of newborn clothes, toy chest, stroller, a car seat for her car, and the list goes on. In the video, she is in tears saying, OMG, I can't believe my baby is going to be here soon. This is where she will sleep, where I will change her little diapers. These will be her toys. Is she psychotic? Her baby? Sleeping and living at her house? What? So I call her up immediately and I reiterate that we are still moving across the country soon and that she will have no contact with the baby before that. Her response? Oh okay, we'll see about that. Genuinely confused, what part of you will have no contact with the baby? Does she not understand? Or thinks she will change in the next few weeks when she is born? Is she planning on stealing her from us? I'm at loss for words. There must be something seriously going on there to just not understand that no contact means no contact. And to set up the nursery and everything like that, it's like, what are you thinking? Are you thinking because you put the effort in, well, now they'll feel obliged like they have to bring her over? It's just really strange and a little bit creepy. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey veteran community at r slash voiceyhere. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey veterans, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you